Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Gould, and welcome to Shooting Like a Professional. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to make your visuals look pro-level. Now, one of the first things you're gonna notice is I'm wearing this fabulous white lab coat. Yes, with my name on it. Now, I read research that said people in lab coats are more likely to get respect than listened to. So you know what? I'm gonna take advantage of that and try to get as much out of this as possible. Now, one of the things we will talk about is color because it's one of the things that your eye is drawn to. You'll notice the color I've put behind me here, this nice green and this nice red. My tie's a nice red. There are certain colors that look great on TV, and these are some of the things before we even start thinking about taking pictures, I start to look at what colors look great. Uh, on video, in photography, red, green, blue looks fantastic. Now the word pixel, you'll heard, you may have heard of that, P-I-X-E-L, is short for picture element. And a picture element are the things that make up the screen that you're watching me on right now. And those are a cluster of three colors, red, green, and blue. So those three colors, red, green, and blue, look terrific. Uh, on the screen. And you'll know that from your uh, screensaver on your MacBook, on your PC. Typically it's a nice blue because it looks really good with those monitors. So when I'm starting to look for pictures, I'm gonna look for some colors that I know will look great on TV. Now this white is really hard to shoot and it's what we call a low intensity color. Whereas these colors in the background is a high intensity color. You'll notice that the combination of the low intensity color, like my shirt, uh, and the high intensity color, like my tie in the background, make for a pretty interesting photograph. But if I go to a more muted background, I am going to look more bland. Now you're gonna see some of that as we go on to the video, uh, but for, for now I'm gonna stand in front of this fantastic uh, colored background. Uh, there's a few things I wanna to talk to you about. What is your eye attracted to? And these are some principles that we apply to video, to photo uh, photography, to web design, anything that involves a visualization uh, on a screen. Uh, one of the things that your eye is attracted to is focus. Maybe sounds silly, but what's in focus is what your eye is going to look at. In advanced shooting, we talk about depth of field, how you can make the background blurry uh, and the foreground focus. Now, in this particular case, because we have lots of light, you'll notice that this number three behind me is perfectly sharp, and I'm also, hopefully, in focus. Now, if I change the depth of field, I could, be, uh, ch I could change that and blur out the three because people will be less likely to look at things like numbers and, and whatnot. Uh, if they're blurry. It's not really numbers we're worried about, it's words, uh, uh, if there's signage behind the person you're interviewing, if I'm standing in front of a, a billboard with stuff on the background, people will always look at the background because very quickly you get bored with this, even if I am wearing a lab coat. So uh, focus is important, movement is, in fo uh, is important too. So in focus movement, what's moving in the frame, your eye's gonna look at that. So if I go like this over here, your eye's gonna be drawn to that part of the screen. Now it looks ridiculous, uh, but you'll see what I mean. Any kind of movement, your eye is gonna, I'm gonna trick your eye, look over here, right? Because I'm static and boring, but my hand is quite interesting because it's moving. So you'll, your eye is always drawn to movement. So when you're taking uh, moving video, you're gonna be looking for things that move. Cars, buses, people on bicycles. Let something go through the frame in order to create uh, some visual interest in your shot, as opposed to a static shot. If I'm doing streets of Toronto, why not get a, a busy intersection as opposed to a back street where there's nothing going on? It has a very different feel to it. Toronto's a busy city. Look at this visual of this um, busy intersection versus this empty alleyway. People always believe what they see over what you tell them. I can say, oh, Toronto's really busy, but then I show you some back alleyways that look dead, or I show you on a, I don't know, a night then there's nobody out. You're thinking, well, that doesn't really look busy to me. But if I show you busy, it reinforces the point. And especially when we're doing factual based information transfer, there's a scientific term for it. Information transfer that's uh, factually based. We want those facts to be accurate. We want our pictures to match um, the, the, the words that we're speaking. So if I say this morning at the Eaton Center there was a huge crowd, I need to see that huge crowd. I don't want to show shots of something later in the day when I got there and everyone had left. So your eyes attracted to focus, movement. Your eyes also attracted to brightness. Now one of the things I don't like about white is you see how bright my, my shirt looks, right? So your eye is going to be drawn to the brightness of my shirt. So if I use a different color, let's say for example I had a blue top on, if I can do this without dropping the ring. See, blue, now my face becomes, uh, is the brighter thing, uh, thing on the screen, and the blue helps to set, set off my face. So if I have a choice, 
Uh, if I'm doing streeters, I'm going to look for people who are wearing some colors, red, green, blue, high intensity colors, those um, cartoon colors that uh, you maybe watched as a kid, or even video games use a lot of high intensity color. Next time you're playing, I don't know, one of these Bejeweled or I don't play any of those games, but some of those games are all colors, right? Candy, what's it called? Candy corn. Uh, that's something different. That was also called we call it Candy Crush, I guess. Uh, lots of colors in those games draws your eye, uh, and that's something that uh, you can use to your advantage. So you want to look for the brightest thing on the screen and be careful of that. Often the brightest thing is behind your subject, and all you have to do is turn your camera just a little bit. Say there's a window or a sun or something that's bright and running behind you. Uh, you want to make sure that um, your brightest thing on the screen is actually your subject uh, and not um, not the background. Uh, the other thing you're going to look for is uh, be careful of words. Now I showed you this number three here. It also says auto script on there. But if I stand talking to you uh, for more than a few seconds, you're going to start reading what's behind me. Now this isn't too bad because it's just one word. But sometimes it's lots of writing. Maybe it's a piece of paper, something on a wall, and you are going to try to read it. And especially with high definition now and um, better bandwidth online, the stuff that's being transmitted is a much higher resolution. We're moving to 4K video transmission, uh, or certainly uh, 4K Blu-ray, that kind of level. You can see a lot of the detail and you can certainly read things. So you have to be careful of words. So again, one of the very first things I'm going to do um, when I'm shooting, and I'll talk about this in a second, is check my background. So uh, sort of put that aside just for now. but. You're going to watch out for uh, your eyes drawn to words, so be careful of that. If my shirt has words on it, try to frame it out. You want to try to create a shot that has just the armpits and the person's head, so you don't see what's on my chest. Let's say I have a shirt that says Paris on it. Well, you've been to Paris, and you know what? Paris is fabulous, and I start thinking about my trip to Paris. And in fact, some of you are thinking about Paris right now as I mention it. So uh, you want to be careful, especially when you're telling stories, that you don't distract people with other things, and words are one of those things that will draw people into another world. Um, also, the size of framing. If you look at the way my, I frame this right now, my head is the larger than my body, pretty much. So you don't want to go too much wider than this. This is a pretty good medium close-up. Uh, I'm doing this sort of on a monopod, so the headroom is sort of going back and forth. But you want to leave about this much headroom, and then um, you see how there's more room on this side where I'm talking into the frame. It's slightly off-center. Uh, if I was doing a stand-up, I might put myself right dead center. Uh, but even that, turning my shoulder sideways is going to give me a, a more interesting shot. So look for angles in a shot. And I can see if I can do this here. So see how this is just a flat wall behind me? There's really no visual interest in the shot. I see a lot of that. People put people up against walls. It looks like a passport photo. But if I turn a little bit, let's see if I go over here without tripping. Uh, if I can create some uh, visual interest this way, uh, the background, there's more interest in the background this way. See how there's some, it's a bit more interesting visually. So that's one of the big keys when we're doing video is always watch your background. Make sure it's interesting. Don't just look at your subject, look behind. So I'm going to look for good colors. I'm going to be careful of words and numbers. Uh, I want uh, interesting angles behind the person, uh, not flat. Uh, dead flat shots. Uh, it can be very, very interesting. And the more interesting shots are ones that are kind of moving, active shots. Now, just because I move around, oh, now I'm in the darkness and I've lost the light um, and you can't see my face anymore. So what I suggest is um, you can frame up your subject with nice lighting and watch the background, make it interesting, but look for visual, uh, uh, a visual background that's um, like movement or angles, it doesn't have to be people walking, but uh, something with a, um, an active image is more interesting than a static one. And you might say, well, what's an active image? Again, I sort of talked about that. If I was going to shoot a streetcar, I'm going to have one moving as opposed to one sitting at the, uh, at the subway or at the, at the, at the bus stop. Uh, what you could do, though, is um, you certainly could get people getting on the bus. That's an interesting shot as opposed to people just standing at the bus stop not doing anything. So sometimes it means you have to wait for something, but a static shot is not nearly as interesting as an active shot. And what uh, makes things the most active is people. We love shots with people in it, and people also identify with other people. So people, 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 that's a good uh, kind of rule of thumbs. Again, remember to use colors. So here's a shot here. You see it's sort of a low intensity, gray, kind of a plain background. It's a similar color to my shirt. Uh, I don't find that visually as interesting as, say, this shot over here. See how the color just pops out? Now, it's a bit flat, so I might turn it a little bit. But I'm always going to be moving my subject around to make sure that the background is good. But you did notice when I walked towards the door, how the lighting kind of went right out the window. So this is professional studio, studio lighting here. 
Uh, it's better on my eyes. My eyes color come out. Again, you can see the problem with wearing white. See how hot that is? So again, if somebody's wearing a white coat, unless it's a doctor and it's relevant to your story, uh, and even then be careful, shoot fairly tight so you can get rid of a lot of the white. Uh, but you're going to use um, angles, color, backgrounds to create your shot and make it interesting. Um, truly and really the hardest thing uh, a lot of times is lighting because especially when you're shooting in the real world, and let's actually take a walk out. I don't know what we're going to get into here. Maybe somebody thinking I'm a bit of a nut, but um, as we get into the real world here, you're going to notice as we leave the studio that the light changes. See how my face, it's almost ghostly now because the light here on my face is bouncing off the floor, so it's kind of scary looking. Let's go out here now and see. Okay, so now we're in the hallway, and you'll see as I walk, different light pools appear. So being straight under a light creates a lot of shadow under my chin. Now really what you, you really need is some kind of a reflector to, to put under the person's chin. And better than that would be a, some kind of a video light. Now I know that that's not always the case, but you just look at where's my light source and where am I gonna best place the person. So if I'm using fluorescent lighting, if I stand right under the light, which is what you got here, you're gonna get a dark shadow. See the shadowing under my eyes? See my eyes all, all dark and raccoon-like? But if I stand between the, sh the two lights, let's see if I can do this. So now there's a fluorescent light on this side of me and this side, and I'm right in the middle of them. I'm getting light from both sides and it's not so bad. And you know, you can actually even, okay, let's, let's find a poster that's, all right. okay, here's a poster from October, so I can use this one. But now I can use a white reflector. Is that doing anything? Right? If you had a big enough piece, you see how it reflects the light. So I can often use a reflector to uh, pick up on the light, and it doesn't even have to be anything fancy. It can just be a piece of white uh, board uh, to reflect the light. So um, lighting is really, really tough, especially when you're in a situation where you have what you have, and you think, oh, well, it looks fine to me. It might look fine to your eyes, but on camera, certain things can be very dark, and you can see again here, if your eyes attracted to the brightest thing in the screen, the, the brightest thing in that screen is not my face, it's this floor behind me. And again, I'm wearing white, so it should be very, very reflective. So be very careful of the background. Um, we want to, uh, with our lighting, there's two different kinds of light. There's hard light and then there's soft light. Fluorescent light, especially if it's diffused, is a softer light, right? You can see there, it's not too bad, and I can get a combination of a nice background with a nice light. But again, you also have to be careful because you see as I turn my face, see how the shadow appears on this side of my face? You want to make sure that the light is on the person's face. Well, now I got a problem because I got pretty good lighting on my face here, but behind me is this plain gray horrible background. So you want to find a balance when you're shooting your stuff to make sure you have a nice background and watch for light. Look for places that are more interesting visually. Now remember I talked about an active background? So I know that I can come out under the bridge here. And people, by the way, if you say, do you mind just walking over here? I'm going to get a better shot if I put you over here. So let's say something like this. See how soft the background is. Again, the lighting is a bit tough. Um, but you're going to do your best with what you, what you can. Sometimes too, if you have like an, um, an iPad or an iPhone or a smartphone of some kind, if you put the screen on white and hold it fairly close, you're going to get a nice soft white light uh, onto the uh, person's face. I noticed with some of the new smartphones, if you're doing a selfie towards you, camera will actually flash uh, like a soft yellow or a white to try to light your face up. Because again, see how my eyes not great. And really what we want is we want great. Nobody wants average. Well, maybe you do. I don't. We don't want average. We want awesome. We don't want fine. We want fabulous. So we're always, always, always looking for fabulous. So I can play with the background here. See the nice angle in the background. Maybe I'm a scientist. You bring me out here. But again, you have to be careful of the light. Now, if I was doing photography, I would use a flash. And one of the things you can do with a flash, because a flash typically is... Um, it's just a really bright light, and especially if you're using, say, a smartphone light. So here's the light here. So it's a very hard light,
but you can see actually how it brings my eyes out, right? So that's just a hard light. If you put a piece of Kleenex over that, you'll soften the light up even more, and you're gonna actually do quite a bit with that and make my eyes look better, you see? So even some kind of light is better than no kind, but you don't want the person to look scary. Here's Dr. Gary Gould from Ryerson. So you have to be very careful how you like the person, because I look a bit like, <laughs> actually I look a lot like Frankenstein. So you can see the way I like the person is gonna make a difference. And typically we want the light to come down to the person's face at about a 45 degree angle. Even if I just offset the light a little bit, even this little uh, smartphone thing, see how nice that is? Now it's really hard to look at, right? You look at that for 10 minutes, but a little piece of one ply Kleenex uh, or toilet paper even will work fine. But whatever color the toilet paper is, that's the color it's gonna put on the face. But you can see, see my eyebrows, how it shadows my eyes? And what the light's gonna do, it's gonna bring the light back into uh, my eyes. Um, doing, doing video at a pro level or doing photography or visuals at a pro level, um, it's not easy. It's something that's gonna take time and effort. It means you're gonna have to move around, but it means being aware, being conscious of things. Like we talked about focus, we like to talk about color. Like in this shot, there's very little color, right? And even my tie, which was a nice red, is lost because there's no light on it and light is what activates the color. So you might say to your subject, do you mind if we go over here? Can I just shoot you over here? And they might say no, but they might say what? Yes. In fact, that's one thing I learned when I was doing my PhD. There's no harm in asking people, right? Because all they can say is what? No. But again, they might say yes. Now this part of Ryerson has again a lot of fluorescent lighting and you can see how it changes on my face. And again, you don't ever want to stand directly under the light. You want the light to come more towards me. Uh, if this was sunlight, same thing. You want the light um, on the subject's face, not behind you, the camera operator. So always be aware of that when you're shooting, that the light is on the subject's face. And again, see if by taking a couple steps, see my eyes? By moving back just a little bit, right, I can put the light on my eyes you can see my eyes, they're not in shadow. So sometimes being a professional is just thinking just a little bit differently. Just saying, hey, can you move back just a little bit? And I notice you're wearing that white jacket. Do you need that white jacket? Um, maybe, or if you're doing street interviews with people, look for somebody wearing red jacket or blue. There's lots of black jackets in our world and grays and stuff. But why not make it easy for yourself? So part of doing a, an interview with somebody is just taking care to put them in the right spot and make sure that the lighting is in the right spot. So again, there's two types of lighting. Hard direct lighting, which creates lots of shadows, and soft diffuse lighting. The fluorescent light tends to be a bit more diffused, although you can still see some shadowing on my shoulder. Natural light uh, outside on a sunny day is a hard direct light. That's very hard to work with. But on an overcast day, say winter time, it's perfect because it's a nice soft diffuse light that's coming in onto your subject's face. Another thing too, when we're talking about shooting images, uh, this is true with photography, with video, whatever, get a variety of images and get lots of them. Medium close-ups, wide shots, different angles, move around, take lots of different shots because the more variety you have, the more you will appreciate it later on when you're, when you're making your photo selection. So be very, very careful uh, with that. Make sure you move around. Don't just stand in one spot. Now you might say, well, what's the best camera? Well, there's lots of different cameras. Um, the best camera is the one you have with you and often it's just your smartphone and that's fine too. So just know how your phone works. That's true of any, any camera that you use, um, any device. You get to know your equipment, know how, know how it's used and how it works. Because if you feel comfortable with your camera, then you're more likely to, um, to do fine with it in a high pressure situation. So, um, so, so those are some of my tips too. Always have a camera at the ready. Uh, these cameras aren't as good as say a DSLR, which aren't as good as pro level cameras, but it's better than nothing. You know, and I talk about always being alert. So as I'm doing this, uh, this workshop thing, I see this big jug here of uh, castor oil in the recycling. Who has a jug that size of castor oil? Now that's a story worth investigating. So always be alert, keep your eye looking for stories. Uh, when you're shooting stories, be aware of the light. Where's it coming from? Look at your subject's face. Look for color in the shot. Look for an interesting background. Be, care of dis uh, be very aware of distracting backgrounds, like say a big sign that says no food or drink right over my head, or this way I'm interviewing somebody and there's a couple signs and I'm right up against the wall. See how uninteresting that is? Or you think, oh, here's a nice green wall. I'm gonna shoot the person right against it 
and suddenly it looks like a passport photo all over again. So uh, make it interesting. See how the, 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 uh, the background is much more interesting if you create an interesting uh, angle. A long background is better than a short background. Let's see if I can get through here without falling over. Um, but that's it. So shooting can be a lot of fun, um, but it, it's really frustrating if you think you've got a good interview and it's poorly lit or there's a distraction in the background or there's a reflection on a screen that you didn't see. Uh, shooting tighter for an interview is better than shooting wide. Uh, and the other thing too that's critically important is audio. I don't know if you've noticed I'm wearing a microphone. Um, but typically the camera mics are not very good at all. So uh, if I'm gonna do a, a video recording, I'm going to make sure that I have a microphone plugged in. And if you have to, then move the camera in closer to the person so that the sound picks up better on your device. Uh, because if people can't hear you, How many of you just checked your headphones? You think, oh no, there's something wrong with the, the, the feed. It's, it's broken, the sound is gone. Well, actually, there's nothing wrong with the feed. I just stopped talking. But if you have bad sound and people can't hear you, that's a problem. And if people can't see you because it's too dark, that's a problem. So there you go. There's some uh, Dr. Gould's tips on uh, some pro-level shooting. Watch your background, watch your focus, keep it interesting. Angles are interesting, movement behind the frame is interesting. Anyways, thanks for listening. Uh, that's it for now. I'm Dr. Gary Gould. Thanks for watching.